In this video tutorial, I'm going to provide an overview of how engine performance data can be evaluated. We're going to look at various different power calculations. We're going to be looking at how we calculate something called the indicated power. We're going to look at how we calculate something called the brake power and how we calculate something called the fuel power. Once we've calculated each of those powers, we can then calculate the indicated thermal efficiency, which is the ratio of the indicated power to the fuel power. We can then calculate the mechanical efficiency, which is a ratio of the brake power to the indicated power. And finally, we can calculate the brake thermal efficiency, which is a ratio of the brake power to the fuel power. And as we go through this tutorial, I'm going to explain what each of these terms mean. We're going to compare two different engines. First of all, we have engine A, which is a two-stroke engine. And then we're going to look at engine B, which is a four-stroke engine. Directly underneath that, I've specified that both of these engines have four cylinders. And the cylinders in both engines have a swept volume of 0.4 litres. It's important to note that the swept volume there is the swept volume per cylinder. So in reality, the engine's going to be drawing in 0.4 litres times four cylinders or 1.6 litres. Both of these engines are 1.6 litre engines. We have something called the mean effective pressure. Now the mean effective pressure is the average pressure that's being delivered by the cylinder during the power stroke. For our two stroke engine we have a value of 470 kilopascals and for the four stroke engine we have a value of 980 kilopascals. Both of our engines are rotating at 1650 rpm our two-stroke engine is delivering 95 newton meters of torque, and that's braking torque, which I'll explain in a moment. The four-stroke engine delivers 110 newton meters of torque. The mass flow rate of fuel into our two-stroke engine is 1.9 grams every second, and into our four-stroke engine it's 1.5 grams every second. And both of the diesels that we're using here have a calorific value of 48 megajoules. So let's begin by calculating our indicator power. And without getting overly technical, the reason it's called indicated power is because it can be taken from something called an indicated diagram. The indicated diagram looks at the changes in pressure in the cylinder throughout the cycle. So when we come to calculating the indicated power, we need a number of things. First of all, we need the pressure within the cylinder. Now the pressure that we need to use is the mean effective pressure. And by mean effective pressure, we mean the average pressure that's being provided during our power stroke. We also need the volume of the cylinder. But when we use the volume of the cylinder, we then need to remember to multiply by the number of cylinders in order to get the total indicated power. The reason being is the formula that we're using here is per cylinder. And finally, we need to multiply by the speed. But the important thing to remember here is that the speed must be in revolutions per second. Our quoted values in our table are in revolutions per minute, as you'll see down here. So first of all, we're going to carry out our calculations for our two-stroke engine. So for our two-stroke engine, or engine A, we have an indicated power equal to the mean effective pressure, 470. Now it's 470 kilopascals, so 470,000. We have a swept volume of the cylinder equal to 0.4 litres. Now we don't want that volume in litres, we want it in metres cubed. And the conversion here is to divide by a thousand. If you're ever unsure on how to convert these different volumes, then there's lots of different conversion tools available through Google. So dividing 0.4 by a thousand, we get 0.0004. So that represents the swept volume per cylinder. And then we need to multiply by the speed, but we need to multiply by the speed in revolutions per second. If our engine's doing 1650 RPM, then it's doing 1650 divided by 60 revolutions every second. Now, as I mentioned before, that's going to give us the indicated power per cylinder. So what we need to do afterwards is multiply that by four for our four cylinders. So running that all through the calculator gives us a total indicated power for our two stroke engine equal to 20,680 watts. Now 
I'm going to leave that in watts for the time being. So next we can calculate our brake power for our two-stroke engine. Now you're probably familiar with the term brake power, or more specifically brake horsepower, and brake power represents the braking torque that's required in order to maintain the speed of our engine. So our engine's running here, and it's running at a speed of 1650 RPM. It's consuming fuel at a rate of 1.9 grams per second, and it's delivering a mean effective pressure of 470 kilopascals. In order to prevent that engine from accelerating, we need to apply a braking torque to our two-stroke engine of 95 newton meters. And that's what we mean by the braking torque or brake horsepower. We have a formula, 2 pi nt. Now once again, we need to remember to use n in revolutions per second and the torque in newton meters. So our brake power then is 2 times pi times the speed in revolutions per second, 1650 over 60, times the braking torque of 95, giving us a brake power equal to 16,415. And once again, that answers in watts. Finally, we can calculate our fuel power. And the fuel power is the amount of energy available within the fuel, or the rate that energy is being delivered as we combust the fuel. Now we're combusting the fuel in the two-stroke engine at a rate of 1.9 grams every second, but we need to remember to convert that to kilograms for SI units. So 1.9 divided by 1,000 is 0.0019. That's the mass flow rate of our fuel in kilograms per second multiplied by the calorific value of the fuel. Well, the calorific value of the fuel is 48 megajoules, and mega is 10 to the 6. Therefore, our fuel power equals 91,200 watts. So now we have our indicated power, our brake power, and our fuel power for our two-stroke engine, we can calculate our indicated thermal efficiency, mechanical efficiency, and brake thermal efficiency. So our indicated thermal efficiency then, as we said before, is our indicated power divided by our fuel power. Our indicated power is 20,680, and our fuel power is 91,200. So doing 20,680, divided by 91,200 gives an indicated thermal efficiency of 0.227 or 22.7%. Next, let's calculate our mechanical efficiency. And our mechanical efficiency is a ratio of the brake power to the indicated power. We have a brake power of 16,415 and we have an indicated power of 20,680. So 16,415 divided by our indicated power of 20,680 gives a mechanical efficiency equal to 79.4%. Now finally, we can calculate our brake thermal efficiency. Now the best way to think of this is it's the amount of energy that's being taken from the fuel and being delivered as power to the road. We know that because the power being delivered to the road is our brake power, and the power being delivered by the fuel is our fuel power. So finally, calculating our brake thermal efficiency, or our overall engine efficiency, we have 16,415 as our brake power, divided by 91,200, for our fuel power, which gives us a brake thermal efficiency of 18.0%. So for completeness, we're going to repeat that set of calculations, except this time we're going to use the data for our four-stroke engine. So let's clear some space and then we can begin those calculations. Okay, so now we're going to carry out our power and efficiency calculations for engine B and note that engine B is a four-stroke engine. The first thing that we're going to calculate is the indicator power. 
But before we do that, I just want to draw your attention to a slight modification to the formula for indicator power. You'll recall that previously, indicator power was calculated by doing pressure times swept volume times rotational speed, and that gave the indicator power per cylinder. But referring to the formula at the top of the page, now we're dividing the rotational speed by two. Now the reason for that is because in a four-stroke engine, we only deliver power every two revolutions of the crank. Because we have four distinct strokes, intake and compression occur during the first revolution of the shaft, and power and exhaust occur during the second revolution. Therefore, every two revolutions yields one power cycle. So whenever we calculate indicator power for a four-stroke engine, we must remember to divide the rotational speed by two, in order to accommodate this fact. So calculating the indicator power for our four-stroke engine, we have the mean effective pressure, this time it's 980 kilopascals or 980,000. We have the swept volume of the cylinder, which is 0.4 litres, dividing by 1,000 to get metres cubed, gives us 0.0004. And we have the rotational speed divided by 2. Now note that the rotational speed of our engine is 1650 rpm. Therefore half of that value is 825 rpm. But also recall that we need the rotational speed in revolutions per second. So we need to take the value of 1650 rpm and halve it. Giving us 825 but we also need to remember to divide by 60 to get from RPM to revolutions per second. As you'll recall, that gives us the indicator power per cylinder. We need to multiply that by the number of cylinders, which in this case is four. Running that through the calculator gives us an indicator power for our four stroke engine equal to 21,560 watts. So next we can calculate our brake power, and the formula is exactly the same for brake power. We have 2 pi times the rotational speed, and this time we're using the 1650 divided by 60, multiplied by the torque of 110 newton meters, giving us a brake power this time equal to 19,007 watts. OK, and finally we can calculate our fuel power, which is calculated by doing the mass flow rate of our fuel in kilograms per second, so 1.5 grams per second divided by 1,000 is 0.0015 kilograms per second, and we need to multiply that by the calorific value, and the calorific value is 48 megajoules per kilogram. Megajoules per kilogram is times 10 to the 6 for mega giving us a fuel power equal to 72,000 watts this time. OK, so now we can calculate our three efficiencies because we know that the indicated thermal efficiency is the indicator power divided by the fuel power. We have an indicator power of 21560 and we have a fuel power of 72,000. 21,560 divided by 72,000 equals 0 0.299 or 29.9%. We can calculate our mechanical efficiency next. And we know that mechanical efficiency is brake power over indicator power. Well, we have a brake power of 19007 and we have an indicator power of 21,560. 19,007 divided by 21,560 equals 88.2% this time. And finally, the brake thermal efficiency, which represents the overall efficiency of the engine, is the brake power, or the power transmitted to the road, divided by the fuel power, or the power provided by the combusted fuel. So we have a brake power of 19,007, and we have a fuel power 
of 72,000. 19,007 divided by 72,000 equals 26.4%. So to summarise, in this video we've looked at how we calculate indicator power, brake power and fuel power for both two-stroke and four-stroke engines. Noting that when we calculate indicator power for four-stroke engines, we must remember to divide the rotational speed of the shaft by two, because we only deliver power every two revolutions. We then looked at how we can calculate a range of different efficiencies, from the indicated thermal efficiency to the mechanical efficiency, and finally the brake thermal efficiency, which represents the true efficiency of the two or four-stroke engine.